Hello, hello, hello. This is your prophetic apostle or your apostolic prophet. What's going on, Robert Stone? Um, <clears throat> I am happy to say that this is number two. Ooh, this is number two. Number two of the uh, prophetic um, teaching. Um, the part of Powell Institute, Prophetic Apostolic and Leadership Institute. Um, I do want to say that uh, we, will, we, we will be beginning classes, <coughs> excuse me, soon on location. Um, the location is 1668-1666 Eastern Road, <coughs> Willow Grove, PA, um, at Faith Fellowship. Uh, International Center, where I am a partnering uh, apostolic prophetic gift, um, partnering, part partnering. I, I'm partnered with, not um, as you um, know normally, but I've partnered partnered with. Um, Apostle Lee and uh, Pastor Larry, um, and me <clears throat> in my uh, ministry with them, um, and being used there. Um, so, that's God. I'm a partner um, as a minister of God, as a leader of God, pastoral, um, again, apostolic and prophetic <clears throat> wise. More apostolic than prophetic nowadays um, than pastoral, but bless God. Um, Again, thank you for being blessed by Powell Institute and being blessed by God. God did give me something today. I've been waiting, <clears throat> glory to God, for him um, to speak some key things and pointing at things to me. And I believe this will turn into a prophetic manual, um, a book. So just keep me in prayer, please. That's uh, one assignment I have for you. But I do have another assignment for you. Because this is school. Yes, the grace, the anointing is there. The empowerment of God is there. The revelation and everything else um, that God sees fit to make is, is there. But it, it is school. And um, so we are now, we are disciples of Christ. Um, which means, um, of course, I'll, I'll teach you on discipleship a little later on. But I'll give you this nugget. Um, the, the disciples of, of the biblical times... <clears throat> Um, they were chosen by the rabbi um, usually to travel with the rabbi and live with the rabbi. In essence, they would leave their life behind to now follow the life of the rabbi. Um, as they did this, again, they would live with the rabbi. Um, and um, it would be such a relationship um, that... They wouldn't just learn educationally of what the rabbi was teaching, which was the, the, the Torah and the prophets um, and the Psalms and stuff like that. Um, but they would learn even the rabbi's lifestyle. So it just wasn't for them to learn the Torah through the rabbi. They could, they could have did that, and, and of course, in the temple alone. But this was a type of mentee and mentor relationship, or as they put it, rabbi and disciple relationship. Again, where they lived with the lived with the rabbi in order to learn the lifestyle of the rabbi based off of the Torah and mimic the lifestyle of the rabbi. Literally, what the rabbi did that was Torah led. They would do the exact same thing. So they would see this thing, not glory to God, not just spoken to them, not just taught to them, to them, but they would see the lifestyle that the rabbi was teaching played out through his life. Glory to God. That was revelation right there. So <laughs> we bless God. I'm going to pray, Lord Heavenly Father. We thank you for the word of God. I'm going to glorify you as you extensively, uh, continuously open me up to hear new and receive fresh Revelation, God, and fresh word from you. We thank you, glorious Holy Spirit. 
that you you teach. You're the teacher. You're the paracletus. You're the come the one. You're the one that comes along a side and helps. Uh, give me the 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 enunciation, the dick proper diction, the 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 uh, um, clarity of speech. Oh God, clarity of mind. Think through my mind. Speak through my lips. Use these hands of clay if need be. But I'm totally open for whatever you want, and I'll submit in the flow how you want me to flow in Jesus' name. We pray, Amen. So we're in our second um, lesson, uh, probably the third or one, two, three, probably the third or fourth video that I've sent you, um, <clears throat> and uh, we we talked about some key things last time, and I don't have time to go over it. You do have the video. Um, and again, you can schedule time with me, um, over the phone to discuss some key things that, um, you may want to discuss, um, prayer concerns, um, scripture, uh, um, the teaching, um, whatever you have access, um, for that and to that. And so just want to remind you of that. So, the prophetic, glory to God, the mention of the prophetic, the prophetic is not just a gifting, and, <clears throat> excuse me, but there is a demonstration of the prophetic ministry through the gifting, okay, um, uh, First Corinthians chapter 14 says, follow the way of love and eagerly desire gifts. For the spirit, or of the spirit, excuse me, follow the way of love and eagerly desire gifts of the spirit, especially prophecy. So yes, um, there is a gift of prophecy. <coughs> excuse me. Um, but but the prophetic is just not just a gift. Um, it's not just a move. But the prophetic carries the very culture, um, and carries a culture. And which a culture is produced by a lifestyle. So in essence, the body of Christ was never just meant to pros prophesy or flow in a prophetic gift or uh, experience a prophetic move. Um, but it was supposed to be a somewhat of a prophetic habitation, which means to live in. We were supposed to live in a prophetic culture, amen, that as easy as we breathed, or breathe is as easy as we are supposed to operate in the prophetic. Now the prophetic is the very heart and mind of God that, that is communicated through his voice. You can say it this way, that his voice is communicated to his people, which represents his heart and his mind, which we call prophetic expressions. God reveals his heart and his mind, not just through, you know, one way or, 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 or um, just one avenue, but um, he moves and expresses himself and speaks through um, many, what I call, prophetic expressions. Now, in order for us to examine that, we have to examine what expressions mean. Uh, we have to define the word. Expression is defined as the process of making known one's thoughts and feelings. So God wants to make his thoughts, his feelings, his, his heart, his mind known to us, but through different avenues, through different expressions. Communication is not just about um, what you say, but communication literally is about what you say through means of the expression you're saying it with, uh, such as um, they say usually um, what you say is not the loudest what people hear. Say it one more time. What you say is not the loudest. And what people hear, it's what you do 
that speaks the loudest. They even say 80% of communication is actually nonverbal. So most of what we say, or we we're saying, is not being heard. But a lot of what we do is being seen a whole lot more clear than what we say. Um, that's that old term uh, that kids don't particularly hear what you say, but they do sure enough watch what you do. So that's no uh, different than God, and God understands that. Although he expresses himself, of course, through a, a verbal uh, avenue. Um, he speaks, of course, um, his heart and his mind uh, through us. But again, it's through many expressions that uh, what he wants to say to us and how he wants to think through us and what he wants to do through us is demonstrated. So again, expression is the process of making known one's thoughts. Now, here's the problem. We, we try to put God in the box. And we can't put God in the box. Because we've only... Most of the church world has only seen certain demonstrations or seen a demonstration of what God is saying through one avenue or two avenues, we just assume that's all he has. But that is not correct. Because here's the problem. If you put God in a box, then you put yourself in a box. And God himself should never be put in the box. So therefore, you should never be put in the box. I personally believe prophets, prophetesses, prophetic people in nature, which is God's people in nature, should never put themselves in the box. Nobody is a carbon copy of anybody, glory to God. But everybody is an individual who God has uniquely made uh, 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 um, to... And four, demonstration based off of their personalities, based off of their lineage, based off of their family background, I mean, based off of their hair color, based off of um, their height. Everything that you are, you were made to be, is a byproduct and is literally God's design, um, but it's a byproduct of where you come from and the family you come from and, and, and the educational system um, that you were raised up in. Um, but it's all ordained by God um, based off of uh, the expression that he needs to to flow through you. But also, it's also a part of who you are concerning destiny-wise. It's based off of your assignment. Let's just kind of bring that a little down. Whatever God has called you to do, whatever God wants you to do, um, whatever you are uh, called to demonstrate will be based off all that you are and that assignment. Um, as a prophet, this uh, apostle named Jennifer DeClaire, uh, she has a book called The Making of a Prophet. And she says this herself. She said, you can put a prophet in a box. We have to understand that God expresses himself through his people and no two people are alike. God never meant it to be that way. But he meant for everybody to search out who they were based off of who he is in their own individual individuality, excuse me. God never meant for you and I to be a carbon copy of anybody everything the totality of who we are was allowed to be made up by God so he can demonstrate who he is through us yes we're made in his likeness yes we're made uh, in his uh, image but we're talking about the multifaceted image of God and I believe each purpose represents a facet or a piece of who God is based off of how they look, how they act, the personality, again, based off of the, the color of your skin, even the hair follicles, 
on your head. I said this in the last video. God has so intricately made us that he literally numbered the hairs of our head. But here is, excuse me, here's not the next step in that. God so intricately made us, he made the hair follicles in our head, he numbered them. But the hair follicles on our head that's even numbered only belong to you. Two ways how they test. Three ways, excuse me, how they test who a person is. Through fingerprints, through dental records, and through hair follicles. Although we all have hair, we all have uh, uh, um, we all have teeth. Well, some of us bought them, you know, dentures. But we all have teeth. We at least all start out with teeth, um, and we all have fingerprints. But no two are the same. Seven billion people on this planet and everybody's is different. I don't care if you are look like in the mirror twins. Your hair follicle is different. Your dental records or, or the way your mouth is constructed is different. And your fingerprints are totally different. So literally when God when we sing to God there is no one like him. He sings back to us. Well, I made you just like me, so guess what? There's no one like you. Why? Because everybody was made to be an individual piece that fit in a puzzle to make the puzzle or the picture complete in the puzzle. Ephesians chapter, I'm not even on my notes now, but Ephesians chapter 2, uh, verse 10 says that we are his workmanship or his masterpiece which clearly means as an artist that there's a, a different uh, styles of painting different styles of, of working with certain things and no two paintings will be the same no two artists who see the same thing will make the same thing I, I don't care because they'll see it from different vantage points. I don't care if you have the same cup and it's the same color. If you have two artists uh, who, who, who draw their cup, it will be a unique difference in their interpretation of, or what they see and their style of artistry by drawing or painting that cup. Well, God is the ultimate artist, glory to God. And I'll tell you right now, that God is a God of diversity, he's a God of difference, and he uniquely made you and I as prophets or as prophetic people to and for his demonstration through us of his heart and mind, and we're not to do it like anybody else, we're not to, to demonstrate it like anybody else. Listen, I am not a prophetic dancer, I, uh, but if God gives me the go-ahead, I'll don't show dance prophetically. And guess what? It'll be like nobody else and be demonstrated like nobody else because nobody can do it like me. I speak, I decree, and I declare. Yes, I dream. And I, I even sing prophetically, actually. That's one of the things that, that um, I, I, I see that has stuck with me over the years uh, when I'm prophesying. I'll start singing prophetic uh, words to a person uh, or I'll play a song that's prophetic and it'll minister to them. But in that, that's just something that's, that's uniquely me. Now, someone else can maybe sing or do the exact same thing, but it, they will do it their way, demonstrate it their way, manifesting their way. Why? Because they are not me and I am not them. I have it as an old saying that I learned I'm from my old apostle years ago. And she used to say, listen, if... If uh, uh, um, two of us are the exact same, the one of us ain't needed. Because it's the truth. God made everybody based off of uh, their individuality. He made everybody uh, uh, be themselves or, 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 or find out who them are. Oh, really got to find out who you are first before you can be yourself. But we were not to be made carbon copies. We were not to be made just like anybody else. You are not to be made um, 
to do it like anybody else. Um, you, but you were made to be just like Jesus in the character of who he was and who he is. And the authority of who he is and what he represented on this earth, you and I are to move in that capacity like, like him. But it's with your own personality. Trust me, when Paul said, imitate me as I imitate Christ, he was not talking about Christ's personality. He was talking about the, the very nature, the very uh, uh, um, the nature of God, who he was. Not like everybody else. The nature.